As the first example here, we will consider an infinite line of charge that is uniformly charged. So we have this infinite line of charge lying on the y-axis. As you can see, it has a positive charge distribution. And we're interested in the electric field at a distance x from the midpoint of this uh, uniform line of charge. And this is actually extending all the way to infinity. So the procedure is as follows. First, we pick up a charge element dq on one side. And at the point of interest, we look at the distance between this dq and this point of interest. Let's call this distance r. And we want to know the electric field due to this dq because we put here a test charge plus Q. Uh, this test charge will be positively charged, so this DQ is positively charged. The electric field will point away from uh, this uh, test charge placed here, so that will be our electric field DE due to this DQ. Now, if I go to a symmetric uh, position in the negative Y direction, I pick another dq at this point at, at, this, at the same distance r from the point of interest, I will see that there, this dq will also produce an electric field dE, uh, making an angle theta with respect to the x-axis. So this angle theta is the same angle theta here. This is the same angle theta here because this is completely symmetric. Now I call the unit vector on the x-axis, positive x-direction i-hat, positive y-direction j-hat. You can immediately see that if you take the y-components of these electric field vectors, they will be identical and they will cancel out. So this will be true for any dq that I will pick up on the positive y-direction uh, because I can always find a symmetric dq in the negative y direction. So they will have their y components cancelling. So it's quite clear that the electric field will be pointing in plus x direction. Okay, so the first argument I made is that the y component of the electric field, which is integral dEy, will be zero due to symmetry. All dqs I pick up on the positive y uh, direction will be balanced by symmetric dqs on the negative y direction, producing exactly the same dey uh, with a negative uh, direction. So they will be cancelling out in pairs. So what is the x component of the electric field, dEx, due to dq? Now you can see here that this dE making an angle theta with the x-axis will have an x component, dE cosine theta. So this will be dE cosine theta. What is dE? According to Coulomb's law, it is k dq over r square. Um, the force was k dq q0 over r square. q0 is my test charge. So force divided by the test charge here gives me the electric field. And cosine theta. k dq over r square cosine theta. And what is dq? For a continuous charge distribution, dq is the uniform charge density lambda dy. So let's say that this uniform line of charge has charge density lambda. All right. So dE will be then uh, k dq, which is k times lambda dy, k lambda dy, which is dq, divided by r squared. Now you can see that uh, tangent theta from this uh, right triangle here 
will be equal to y divided by x. So let me note here that tangent theta is y divided by x. And if I take the uh, differential of both sides, secant squared theta d theta is going to be equal to dy over x. All right, so x here is not something that is changing uh, with position on the um, on the line. x is a constant here. That's the distance from the midpoint of the line to the point of interest. And uh, so uh, when I take the differential of y over x, since x is a constant, it's dy over x. So this tells me that dy is equal to x secant square theta d theta. And on the other hand, y is equal to x tangent theta. Now the distance between my charge element dq and the point of interest r is part of this triangle. It's the hypotenuse. So I can see that r square must be equal to x square plus y square. And this is x square plus x square tangent square theta. That is x square 1 plus tangent square theta. That is basically nothing but x square secant square theta. 1 plus tangent square is secant square. So what will be the x component of the electric field? Ex will be um, an integral uh, from an angle minus pi over 2 to plus pi over 2. So you can see that this theta will vary between minus pi over 2, if this line goes to infinity, to plus pi over 2 on this side. So as you go up, the angle keeps increasing and in the infinite limit, it becomes plus pi over 2. Uh, so kdq over r squared. So I have k lambda dy, k uh, lambda dy is x secant square theta d theta k lambda dy over r squared r squared is x squared secant squared theta and then here i have so let me take this d theta to the uh, to the right this is going to be cosine theta d theta so what have i done here for k dq over r squared, I substituted k lambda dy over r squared. k lambda dy, x secant square theta d theta is dy, cosine theta over r squared, which is x squared secant squared theta. So what happens here? Secant squared thetas will be cancelling out. And also, I'm... Uh, getting rid of one of the x's here so this x will be getting rid of this x and i'm left with an integral k lambda over x these are all constants integral of cosine theta d theta integral of cosine is sine sine theta which will be evaluated between minus pi over 2 and plus pi over 2. So the electric field x component will be then sine pi over 2 is 1, sine minus pi over 2 is minus 1, 1 minus minus 1 gives me 2, 2k two lambda over x. So this will be 2k lambda over x. Therefore, 
the x component of the electric field k remember is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 is lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 2 pi epsilon 0 x now I'm ready to write the total electric field the total electric field due to this line of charge will be equal to lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 x in i hat direction because i only have the x component all right so let's summarize what we did here we have a uniform line of charge charge density lambda uh, a dq charge element here is basically lambda times dy so this is basically my dy lambda times dy gives me dq and that dq produces an electric field at a distance r which is a distance x from the midpoint of the line uh, de and this has an x component and y component but due to symmetry since i can pick a symmetric dq on the other side uh, because this is symmetric mirror symmetry with respect to the uh, midpoint here a line going through the midpoint here so that will produce exactly the same de y component so the y components will cancel x components will add up it will be equal to de cosine theta you can see tangent theta is y over x r square is x square plus y square r square is x square secant square theta or x square times one plus tangent square theta because y is x tangent theta and at the same time my de here is k dq over r squared uh, so multiplied with cosine theta gives me the x component and for dq i substitute lambda dy and so that's going to give me k a uh, lambda dy lambda x secant square theta d theta that is dy uh, secant square theta d theta is dy over x and cosine theta divided by r square which is x square secant square theta secant square thetas cancel x uh, one of the x's cancel I'll, i'm left with k lambda over x integral of cosine theta d theta which is sine theta evaluated between minus pi over 2 and plus pi over 2 y minus pi over 2 and plus pi over 2 as i go far away this angle it keeps increasing and in the infinite limit this is basically approaching minus pi over 2 and here it's going to be plus pi over 2 okay so the angle will be uh, increasing like this let's say uh, so we have therefore uh, sine theta evaluated at pi over 2 minus sine theta evaluated at minus pi over 2 gives us a 2 2 k lambda over x k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 so it is lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 x so we can write our final answer electric field lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 x in i hat direction